on a regular basis because I get a chance to play with plants. And for me, <laughs> this guy was really a trip. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if you can see it real well, but he's got like polka dots. Yellow polka dots, of all things. It was an itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. <laughs> I mean, I have two of them because I got this tree kind of plant and it was really tiny. I think I got a 99 cent store, as a matter of fact, and it was like, oh, I don't know, about that big. And uh, had kind of two shoots, maybe three, I'm not sure, but at least two shoots out. And um, I tried to transplant it, and I think one of them died. And then later, I wound up <laughs> transplanting one of them, and it grew. And then I transplanted another one, and it grew. I'm so proud of those little trees. They're my little goofy thing that God does. That I enjoy when He does it because it amazes me that He can take something simple and make it beautiful that I would be able to enjoy that knowing He had done it and that I didn't really have that much to do with it. Oh, sure, maybe I put it in a pot and I watered it, you know, but anybody can kill a plant off. I mean, you probably have done it, right? I mean, you probably have plants that, and no matter what you did, you know, you managed to kill that sucker. <laughs> I'll admit, most of the plants that I, I have, I usually can grow pretty good. And I have been a gardener in the past, but there have been times where some of the plants have died on me, you know. There have been times where, actually, my wife brought a few of them back that Little did I know, all I do is quit watering them. <laughs> but I like bringing them out, putting them on the deck before it gets really cold out. Get some fresh air, and then I put it back inside, and our house is looking like a jungle, which is what I promised my wife, you know. And I told her, I said, one of these days, I said, cut me loose, and I said, I'll have this place looking like a jungle. It'll just be covered with plants. And I don't know about you, but I like it that way, you know? Maybe you like technology and all these other things, and I play with that too, but I like plants. Just something about it. Don't know what it is, but just makes me feel good to see how they grow, to watch them develop, to pot them and to take cuttings from them and to take, like, one big plant, which I have this giant vine that just goes forever. It must be 10 feet long. and I'll cut it up into pieces and put it into different pots and let them grow. And they get longer. <laughs> I give them away. I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> I think, you know, church ought to be like that. Maybe we should only grow a church for so long and then repot it. Maybe put it into a different setting and Put it somewhere else. Let it grow somewhere else. By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, that in blessing I will bless you. You know, that's kind of, I guess, what's my joy, is that I know in growing these things, it's kind of a blessing from the Lord. You know, it's kind of what God has blessed me with the ability to do, because I've worked in gardens and I like it. I like to get my hands in dirt, you know. I'll go along for a while, you know, doing the techie thing or construction or whatever, maybe, but sooner or later, I just got to get my hands dirty. <laughs> Whatever I do, it seems like there's a blessing there. God seems to bless me with my plants growing. Abraham has reached the place where he is in touch with the very nature of God. My goal is God himself at any cost, dear Lord, by any road. When you are willing to find God, when you really want to know God, when you want to do anything to get God, maybe you'll find, like I did, that it ain't an easy road. 
It wasn't one for me, anyways. And God honored my prayer. He made it very real. So real, it nearly killed me. But the knowledge that I have and the personal relationship that I have with not just God my Father, but with Jesus himself and by the way of the Holy Spirit, so many gifts and capabilities and fruit in my life that, you know, I wouldn't give up any of the things that I suffered for what I have attained and to the knowledge of Jesus himself. For what things I would have thought as lost, I count but dung for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because in a lot of ways, I tell people, and I still do to this day, Look, I'm nobody special. So why did God talk to me? Why does God speak to me audibly? Why can you hear God's voice physically? Because he said so, and that's all I believed in. Somebody told me, hey, read this. So I did. And what did I read? Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and so they know me, and they will not follow the voice of another. Jesus said, hey, look, I'm knocking. You open the door, my father and I will come in. I was an idiot. I thought he meant it. I didn't know it wasn't true. So you see, I am nobody special, but something special happened to me. And I didn't just get born again. I mean, that sounds good. You know, get born again. Oh, yeah, let's do it all over again. <laughs> let's crawl back in our mother's womb. No, not that. I was born spiritually. I mean, I had the miraculous whoosh, you know, whoosh, whoosh, you know, experience. And I had marvelous, unbelievable knowledge, and my life was changed, although I was not a sinner before I got saved. At least I didn't think so. I wasn't such a bad guy, after all. At least I didn't think so. And people didn't think so either, so it really wasn't that much of a change, I guess. But the change, whoa. The ability to talk to God and for God to speak with me and to me and for God to forgive me and for God to inspire me and for God to use me. Oh man, that is unbelievable. That is miraculous. That's a, like the Wizard of Oz, a bird of another feather, <laughs> so to speak. And I became a creature of another God. Because the God of this world lost one when he got a hold of me. Because guess what? <laughs> God saved me. Thank God. But to know God in that way, you got to be willing to say at all costs, even the loss of your family. You see, I, uh, I lost my family. I lost my sisters. I lost my mother. I lost my numerous relatives along the way. And it hurt. It hurt not having a father. And I didn't. It hurt having a mother who was more of a father and not a mother. It hurt so bad that I was looking for love that I didn't have in my family world. And I didn't know it because I didn't know what I was looking for. So when I got saved, I experienced overwhelming love unlike anything I'd ever experienced before in my life. <laughs> And to this day, still I've never ever experienced of anything comparable in my life. And I've tried. But the love of God, when he comes into you and fills you with his love, oh, how would you dare to imagine that anything of this world would be comparable to that love that he has for you? <laughs> so, yeah, I lost my sisters and my mother. They didn't want to have anything to do with me. And I went off on tangents at times, learning about the Lord. But you know, when they got saved, <laughs> and some of them may be nominally saved, I'm not so sure. You, know, you, you worry about your own family more than you worry about others. 
Or maybe vice versa, I don't know. But as my family got saved one by one, my mother got saved before she died, I watched them grow and develop, you know, from afar and had to pray for them at times without being able to share with them. I was so blessed to know my Father in Heaven loved me so much that He didn't just save me for myself. Although, <laughs> thank you, God. <laughs> Narcissistic that I am, though. But He saved me and loved me so much that He saved my family, too. And you know, that kind of salvation is worth the price. So, if you're willing to get to know God in a more intimate and personal way, you will pay, as Jesus did. If there be any other way, if there be any other way at all for this cup to pass me by, then let it be so. I'd rather not drink it. I'd rather not die. I'd rather not suffer. But, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. If you want to be a man of faith or a woman of God, if you want to be a child of God, if you want to be born again, oh, freely you receive, freely give. Oh, come to Jesus, for his yoke is easy and his burden is light. But the cost of discipleship will cost you your life. Because what you're giving up, it's worth it. It's very, very, very worth it. But God is bidding you to come and die with him and to live in sin. And it will cost you. It will cost you dearly. I won't lie to you. You'll pay a price. But you will receive so much more at the end of your life than you ever dreamed you would have had at the beginning of your life as you walk with God all your life. At any cost, by any road, means nothing self-chosen in the way God brings us to the goal. There is no possibility of questioning when God speaks, if he speaks to his own nature in me. Prompt obedience is the only result. As I hear, I do. As he speaks, I obey. Let go and I let go, when he says. Trust in God in this matter and I do trust. The whole working out is the evidence that the nature of God his very Holy Spirit is in me by what I do and obey. By the discipline of obedience, I get to the place where Abraham was and I see who God is. God is love. I never have a real God until I have come face to face with him in Jesus Christ. Not my will, but thy will, Father, be done. Then I know that in all the world, my God, there is none but you and there is none but you. And you are all I want. For if the whole world you can have would just give me Jesus. The promises of God are of no value to us until by obedience we understand the nature of God, that God is love, that he would not give us something that would not be good for us, but that rather we would choose to give to him the decision-making for us to have only those things that are profitable and beneficial to us. For what father on earth gives their child a stone. And what father on earth gives them weeds or something that would hurt them? But rather, a father who loves gives good things to their children. How much more so would our Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who would ask and gives to us those good things, those precious promises, those joys that we see maybe through time at the end of our life that the cost of walking with God has been worth it that the price of knowing God is far surpassed to anything that there exists in this world. And we have eternity more to come. We read some things in the Bible 365 times and they mean nothing to us. Then all of a sudden we see what God means and it becomes in some particular way because we've obeyed and instantly his nature is opened up to us. Suddenly we discover God is real. He meant it. He did it. Wow, he was faithful. We only can do, experience, and see what we live in, this body, this flesh, the world around us. And as we do, we discover 
that we can trust in the Lord with all our heart, and we can lean not in our own understanding, that in all our ways we can acknowledge Him, and we can trust Him for our path.